in the morning. I'll put a snake in her millet. I'm going to read you this lovely story about a rajah and a tiger. I just had the most marvelous idea. After the governor's ball, why don't we go for a breakfast picnic along the river? Oh, yes, for well, that. I don't think I should feel like a picnic after dancing all night. Nonsense. Besides, I shan't be going to the ball. Stephen has booked me a passage to England. He says there's some kind of plague in the provinces. Oh, there's always some kind of plague in the provinces, Mrs. Crawford. I wouldn't let that stop me from going to the ball. Hmm. I don't know what's got into the servants. Harry, could you see why they aren't answering the bell?
meat is dead. And there's no one to dress me or give me breakfast. may have taken the child with them. She's here, Colonel. She's alive. Of course I'm alive, but Sainid is dead, so I shall need a new Aya. Poor child. I'm not a poor child. I'm Mary Lennox, and my father has a very important position at Government House. She doesn't know, Colonel. I'm afraid there's no easy way to tell you this, child. I'm very sorry, my dear, but your parents are dead. Oh, my dog! She doesn't understand, Colonel. Hardly surprising. Look, we'll take you to Mrs. Crawford. She can look after you until other arrangements are made. Give me my doll! Give me my doll! Get her up here, Sergeant. Mary, you haven't touched your tea. Are you not hungry? No. Oh, yes, she's just over there, madam. Mrs. Crawford? You must be Mrs. Medlock. Please do sit down. Thank you. Mary, this is Mrs. Medlock, who is going to take you to Yorkshire tomorrow. And Mr. Craven said to thank you for bringing the little girl, ma'am. Oh, it would have been unkind not to, since I was returning to England anyway. Will you have some tea? Oh, no, thank you. And what time will you be calling for Mary tomorrow? The train leaves at seven, so I'll be here at six. So early? Mary, will you be good enough to ask the desk clerk to send the porter for your trunk a little before six? She's a difficult child, Mrs. Medlock. But to be fair, it's not entirely her fault. If her mother had carried her pretty face into the nursery more often, Mary might not be quite so recalcitrant. Mm. Neglected her, did she? I know that one should not speak ill of the dead. But Mrs. Lennox was a very silly and shallow woman. She was embarrassed that Mary was plain, at least in her eyes. And Mary knew it. Pity? Yes. It's kind of Mr. Craven to take Mary, especially since they're not related. Oh, there's no living relative. But as old Mr. Craven and Captain Lennox's father were dear friends, until they both passed on, Young Mr. Craven felt obliged to give the little girl a home. I've got some nice watercress sandwiches. Would you like one? I don't like English food. Only Indian. Well, oh, English food is all you'll be getting at Misselthwaite Manor, so you better get used to it. Oh, it was different when Mrs. Craven was alive. She had cook make all sorts of foreign dishes. They took the recipe out of books. Mr. Archibald, Mr. Craven, 
that is. He didn't mind. Oh, she was such a sweet, pretty thing. Nobody ever thought she'd marry him, not with that hump on his back. But she did. It's like a French fairy tale I once read. Riquet de la Haute. It was about a hunchback and a beautiful princess. So, there is something that interests you. I didn't say I was interested. These are the moors. The moors are ugly. Did your father ever tell you about Misselthwaite Manor? Why should he? He didn't know he was going to die and I'd have to live there. Very well, then. I will. Misselthwaite Manor is a grand place. It was built ages ago and has over 100 rooms. I don't give a tinker's damn how many rooms there are. Your manners could use improving. I don't have to be polite to servants. Mind yourself, Missy. I'm Mr. Craven's housekeeper and servant to no one. I'll overlook your bad manners this once, seeing as how you've been through so much sadness. Not that you'll find much joy at Misselthwaite Manor. Mr. Archibald still grieves for his wife and won't trouble himself with anyone. Trip, Mrs. Medlock. I've had worse. Fetch Miss Mary's trunk and use the back stairs. So I'll tiptoe all the way. I wouldn't want to wake the dead. to her rooms. He doesn't want to see her, and he'll be leaving for London in the morning. As long as I know what's expected of me, Mr. Pitcher. What is expected, Mrs. Medlock, is that you make certain that Mr. Archibald is not disturbed, and that he doesn't see what he doesn't want to see. Well, there's a revelation. Come on. This is where you're going to live, Miss Mary. This is your bedroom. And your sitting room's just through there. These rooms were especially prepared for you. Oh, what's see, a little supper's been laid out for you. You must be tired, so eat it and go to bed. Good night. You can go anywhere you like in this wing of the house, but you're not to go poking around anywhere else. Mr. Archibald won't have it, and neither will I. Is that understood?
Morning, Mr. Wustaff. Morning, Dickon. Wishing the day in with a song? Just saying hello to the morning. If you've got a minute, I'll show you a trick I just learned. I've work waiting on me at the manor. Please? <laughs> Guess the work will wait till I get there. Take yourself elsewhere, Sid. <laughs> Good trick. <laughs> Especially the last part. I'm off. See you around, Diggin. See you about, Mr. Withstaff. Martha Salby. Are you going to be my servant? I'm to do a bit of cleaning up here and a bit of waiting on you. Though, judging by your size, you won't need much waiting on, will you? Of course I'll need to be waited on. Someone has to dress me. Can you not dress yourself? Of course I can. But in India, my eye dressed me. Well, you're in Yorkshire now. And children dress themselves as soon as they're out in nappies. You'll find some lovely new garments in the cupboard. Warm ones. Bought by Mrs. Medlock on Mr. Archibald's orders. I thought he troubled himself with no one. He don't. It was Mrs. Medlock who told him you'd not have proper clothing for the cold since you're coming from India. And it was she who had these rooms fixed up, all pretty for you. I know you was wore out from your journey, so I hope you had a good sleep. How could I sleep with all that crying and moaning? This is a haunted house, isn't it? It was the wind you heard withering across the moors. It often makes a mournful sound. You best eat your breakfast before it gets cold. I don't like English food. I've nine little brothers and sisters who eat the table clean in a minute. Nine brothers and sisters? Yeah. No doubt there'd be more if me dad hadn't died in his prime. Feeding that brood's hard on mother, but Dickens a help. Who's Dickon? He's one of our gaggler children. He leaves what food there is for the others, and he feeds himself out on the moors. He says the wild goats give him their milk, and there's lovely greens and berries all his for the taking. He sounds peculiar. He's a rare boy, Dickon. He talks to the animals, and they talk back. That's the silliest thing I've ever heard. And when he plays his pan pipe, wild animals stop and listen. Animals can't talk and they don't listen to music. I told you Dickie was a rare boy. I didn't dismiss you. You'll be making your own bed up then. You have my permission to go on with your work. Queen couldn't have said it better herself. I have nothing to do. There's plenty of gardens you can go and play in. Except for the one that's locked. How can a garden be locked? It can if there's a high wall round it. You better dress up warm if you're going out. March can be a cruel month in Yorkshire. Got eyes. I'm turning the earth for planting vegetables when the spring comes. It doesn't surprise me you're rude. All the servants here seem to be rude. I take it you're the little wench just come from India. I'm not a little wench. I am Mary Lennox. You may call me Miss Mary if you like. Where are the flower gardens? The other side. The naught blooms at this time of year. Where's the locked up garden? There's no door into it. So you can save yourself the trouble of looking. Of course 
course there's a door. If there wasn't a door, it wouldn't be locked. Don't go poking your nose where it's no cause to go. I think everyone in Yorkshire is mad as a hatter. Ah, <laughs> you cheeky little beggar. <laughs> as you started courting this early in the season. <laughs> he has a Jew. <laughs> Considered himself my friend. I never had any friends. Then we're a good deal alike. Neither of us good looking and each of us as sour as we look. Do you think you'd mind being my friend too? If you'll be my friend, I'll be yours. You said that as nice and human as Dickon talks to his wild creatures. You know Dickon? <laughs> the very blackberries and heather bells knows Dickon. The foxes show him where their cubs lies. The skylarks don't hide their nests from him. <clears throat> Off with you. I've work to do. I think I'll go look for the door into the lot garden. Yeah, well, all you'll find <laughs> brambles and thorns. We shall see. Shan't we? Dickon, aren't you? Aye. I, I was waiting for you, Miss Mary. How'd you know my name? And how'd you know I was going to be here when I didn't even know myself? Sometimes wishing makes things happen. The crow is soot. The fox is captain. The lamb is lady. The squirrel is nut. And the rabbits just happen to be passing. Those are strange names for animals. It's what they asked to be called. Animals and birds can't talk. There's ways of talking that don't take words. I've gathered some wild mustard seeds for Ben Witherstaff. So if you don't mind company, I'll walk back to the manor with you. You're sad and lonely now. But in time, you'll find happiness in Mr. Thwaite Manor. No. I shall never be happy there. And I don't want your company nor anyone else's. Your bed's turned down and the room's all cozy. Listen to that wind. I looked for the door into the lock garden again today, but I couldn't find it. Why trouble yourself when there's so many other gardens you can go and play in? I like to know about things. Why was that garden locked up? But for that garden, Mr. Archibald wouldn't be the way he is. What do you mean? You'll not repeat what I tell you. You know I have no one to talk to except you. <laughs> All right, then. But mind you, I'm only telling you what Mrs. Medlock said. Because this happened long before I came to work here. Mrs. Craven had that garden made when she first came to Misselthwaite as a bride. And she and Mr. Archibald would shut themselves inside for hours and hours, like two lovebirds. Well, if the garden was such a happy place, why was it locked up? Because it's where the accident happened. 
There was an old tree in the garden with a high branch bent like a seat. And Mrs. Craven, Lilius was her name, she loved to climb up and sit on the branch and read when she was alone. Well, one day, the branch broke and she hurt herself so bad she died the next day. And Mr. Craven was so wild with grief that he locked up the garden and threw away the key. That's what Mrs. Medlock said. But how did you know? I didn't. You just told me. If there's a key, there must be a door. And I intend to find it. <laughs> downstairs to cause such a terrible draught. You heard it too, didn't you? I heard what? Someone crying. I told you. The wind often makes a mournful sound. <sighs> no, it wasn't the wind. It was human. And if it wasn't human, it was a ghost. It was the wind you heard, wuthering across the moors. Good night, Miss Mary. My thanks to her. There's nobody bakes better bread than Susan Sarabee. She'd be pleased to hear that. And not a day she don't go looking for the door into the locked garden. And she'll not find it. It is better so. Have you ever been in the garden, Mr. Witherstaff? We'll not talk about that garden. Well, Miss Mary won't give up. There's a stubbornness in her. But there's also a need. I'm off. See you about, Mr. Witterstaff. You have nothing to do when it rains. Mrs. Medlock has wool to spare. You could knit. I don't know how. You could read. I haven't any books. Oh, there's thousands of books in Mr. Archibald's library. Mrs. Medlock said I wasn't to go anywhere except in the swing. The library is in the swing. But finding it's a bit trickish, so I'll tell you how.
What are you doing here? I don't have to shout. I got lost going to the library. And, well, I heard someone crying. Old houses are full of strange sounds. I know what I heard. It was someone crying. Well, perhaps you're right. Betty, who works in the scullery, has been carrying on all day because she has a toothache. Come, I'll take you to your room. Toothache? Morning, miss. Who are you? Betty. It's Martha's free day and she's gone to the cottage to give her mum a hand. Is your uh, toothache gone? Toothache? The toothache you didn't have. Uh, Betty Cook wants you with the scullery. It's terribly muddy out because of the rain. I thought we'd go into the village this morning and buy you a sturdier pair of shoes. It'll be a nice little outing for you as well. I know you're lonely. When Mr. Archibald comes back, I shall speak to him and ask him to get a governess for you. I had governesses in India. None of them stayed very long. They didn't like me. Oh, I'm sure that's not true. I don't lie. You do. What a dreadful thing to say. Well, it's true. You lied to me yesterday about Betty having a toothache, and there's something behind that tapestry that you don't want me to know about. from Martha last night, and I'm already very good at it. Oh, well, maybe there is some child's blood in your veins after all. I've decided to skip a hundred times without stopping. Oh. One, two... Pride goeth before a fall! Four, five... Ninety-four... Ninety-five... Ninety-six... Ninety-seven... Ninety-eight... Ninety... Have you begun courting it, you cheeky little beggar? Are you looking for food?
my own secret garden. things grow. <laughs> you can make things grow just by whispering to them. When will it be spring? Spring comes on sudden in Yorkshire. You'll wake up one morning and the moors will be all purple with heather. <laughs> I'll go and turn your bed down now. I wish I had a little spade. Whatever for? Well, if I had a spade, I can make a garden, a vegetable garden. I'd make it next to the big vegetable garden. It'd give me something to do. There's a shop in Thwaite Village that has gardening sets for children. There's a fork and a spade and a rake all tied together. But it will cost two shillings. Oh, I've got more than that. Much more. My mother used to give me money on my birthday so I could buy a present for myself, but I never did. Well, if you give me the two shillings, I'll give it to the butcher boy when he comes and he'll pass it on to Dickon. Dickon will go and get your gardening set for you. I've brought your garden set. If you'll show me where you want to make your garden, I'll be pleased to help you start it. If I tell you the secret, will you promise not to tell anyone else? All right. If it's what you want. I've stolen a garden. I had to. It was locked up and no one's taken care of it for ages and ages. And I'm not giving it back. Our garden's not for given or taken. The garden belongs to all. You found the door. It was meant to be. I was hoping it would look different than before. But it doesn't. Everything still looks dead. That's how I thought it'd be. If you look deep, you see it still has a green heart. Could be others this wick, too. Wick? In Yorkshire, wick means live. Even the thorny ones? Aye. They've run wild and attached themselves everywhere. Some of them died. But the strong ones will be wick. And once the dead wood's cut away, there'll be roses. There'll be roses. Archibald is back and he wants to see you. Why? Why does he want to see me? I imagine it's about the governess. I mentioned it to Mr. Pitcher and he said he'd pass it on to Mr. Archibald.
Oh, don't be afraid. I know children usually find me frightening, but I'm quite harmless, I assure you. You're too thin. I'm getting fatter. You resemble your father. I only met him once when we were boys, but I remember him. I envied him because he was on his way to Harrow. And I was too ill to go away to school. Ill. I have always been ill. I'm sorry. Yes. Are they taking good care of you? You find me repulsive, don't you? You look... You, you look different from other people, but not repulsive. Different? Yes, I look different. If we met in the dark, would you scream and run away? I might, but it would only be because it's the first time. Honesty is rare. I value it. Are you happy here? I like India better. This is a sad house for a child. We accept what we must. Oh, I meant to get a governess for you. I forgot. I'll see to it now. Uh, please, can I go without a governess for a while? Why? Well, I'm just getting used to being here. And when I came here, I wasn't very well. But now I'm getting better. And it's... It's, it's because I'm out a lot. And... Well, if I had lessons, I wouldn't be out as much. And besides, I'm ahead on my studies. Um, I know French, I'm good at history, and I read a lot. Very well. Governess can wait. Is there anything you need or want? Please, could I have a bit of earth to make a garden? I love gardens. There was once someone, someone very dear to me, who loved gardens too. Take your bit of earth, whatever you please. Go now, leave me. the saddest man I've ever seen. Like the hunchback of Notre Dame. Who died because he loved Esmeralda.
Stay away from me. I'm Mary Lennox. I came here from India so Mr. Archibald Craven could be my guardian. Are you sure you're not a ghost? Touch me. If I'm a ghost, your hand will go right through mine. You feel real? I am. Who are you? Colin Craven. My father's master of Mistlethwaite Manor. Your father? Why didn't someone tell me he had a son? Because no one's allowed to talk about me. Why? Because I won't have it. Neither will my father. Why? Because I'm going to have a hump on my back like he has. Is that why you cry all the time? Yes. Don't you ever go out of this room? No. If people look at me, I have a fit and get a fever. I'm looking at you and you're not having a fit. I might. Well, you can save yourself the trouble. Now that I know you're human, not a spirit or ghost, I'm going back to bed. You'll stay. I have no one to talk to except my nurse, and she's away on holiday. I don't have to stay if I don't want to. You said you came from India. I want to know about India. You can read about India in books. Reading makes my head ache. Well, if I were your father, I'd make you read so you could learn about things. No one can make me do anything. Why not? Because I'm sick, and I probably won't live to grow up. Do you want to live? Not if I'm going to have a hump on my back, like my father. You're the cryingest boy I've ever seen. I'm going back to bed. You'll stay till I say you can go. You can't make me stay if I don't want to. Yes, I can. Everyone has to do as I say because I'm going to die. People who talk about dying are boring. I'm going. You may go now. But you will come again tomorrow. I might, if I don't have anything else to do. Mary, you shouldn't have gone looking for Master Colin. Well, if you would have told me Mr. Craven had a boy, I wouldn't have gone looking for who was crying. But no one is allowed to talk about him or see him. Well, then how do you know I saw him? Because Master Colin told me. I'm the one who has to look after him when his nurse is away. I'll be blamed for telling you and I'll lose my place here. You won't lose your place here because I'm not going to tell anybody that I saw him. And no one's going to know except you. But Master Colin says if you don't come now, he'll scream and scream until he brings the house down. We'll see about that. You said you'd come. I said I might. Mighty is only maybe, and I don't care if you scream till you're blue in the face. I suppose as long as I'm here, I might as well stay. Bring a stool and sit next to me. I never had to do anything for myself in India. The English people are lords and masters there, you know? No, I didn't know. You don't know anything, do you? I'm trying to see the lump on my back, aren't you? Father, your lump. I'm just thinking about how different you are from Dickon. Dickon? He's Martha's brother. If she wasn't so scared of you, she probably would have told you about him. Dickon's not like anyone in the world. Why? Well, because he can charm animals and birds. He talks to them, and they talk back. That's magic! <laughs> Dickens, my friend, the first friend I ever had. Then I shall order him to be my friend, too. You don't know anything, do you? <laughs> you can't order someone to be your friend. They have to want to be. How dare you permit a stranger in the sick room? Oh, 
trouble. She's not a stranger, and I want her here. Calm yourself, Master Colin. You know excitement makes you ill. You're the one who's making me so ill. Go away. You're to rest now. I insist. The vicar is ailing, so I'll get on to him and return tomorrow. Yes, Doctor. Miss Mary found our little tyrant. Master Colin actually wanted her there. I always said what Master Colin needs is the company of another child. What Master Colin needs is a father who don't treat him like another plague that's been visited on him. Anyway, it's done. And to tell the truth, I'm relieved in a way. It's been no easy thing trying to keep Miss Mary from finding out about Master Colin. Still, it's fortunate that Mr. Archibald left for Cornwall this morning. Dr. Craven saw Miss Mary with Master Colin. He won't tell. He's Mr. Archibald's cousin and down to inherit the manners one day, so he's not about to get Mr. Archibald angry. Hey! We'll have none of that. I've known Dr. Craven since he and Mr. Archibald were boys. It was seeing Mr. Archibald suffer that turned Dr. Craven to medicine. So you just watch yourself, my girl. Go and see what's keeping your brothers and sisters. Okay. Morning, Mrs. Medlock. Morning, Mrs. Alvey. How's the little girl getting on, Mrs. Medlock? The one that come from India. <clears throat> Go and help your brother. There are times when her rudeness and arrogance made me wish she'd never left India. Still, I suppose Martha's told you that. My Martha doesn't gossip about what goes on up at the manor. But she has asked my advice about how to deal with the little girl. I could use your advice, Mrs. Salby. After all, you have had ten children. <laughs> not two of them alike. Yes, but even so. Well, if it's not too forward of me, I will tell you what I told Martha. Hmm. A firm hand is needed. But there's also the need to see what's behind it when a child acts up. From what Martha told me, there's a lot of hurt inside that little girl. Seems to me she's like one of those wild creatures that Dickon finds out on the moors sometimes, caught in a snare or a trap. It strikes out at Dickon when he's trying to help them, but in the end, they, he wins their trust with his gentleness. My carriage is waiting, so I'll be running along. Good morning, Mrs. Salby. Today. I like the rain. So does the garden. Come, I've something to show you. They bloomed. Aye. Crocuses and snowdrops and daffodown dillies is always the first to say spring's on the way. When will the roses bloom? Not till June. Oh, it's only the beginning of April. June's such a long way away. Aye. But when they bloom, there'll be curtains and fountains of roses. Curtains and fountains of roses? Aye, but not unless the dead wood's cut away and the earth is softened so they can drink the rain. There's lots to be done. Well, tell me what you want me to do and I'll do it. If you'll clean the flower wounds, I'll bring fresh earth to put in them. I'm going to tell you another secret, Dickon. There's a sick boy who lives in Mizzlethwaite Manor and no one's allowed to see him. But I saw him. It's Master Colin you're talking about. You know about him? Aye. Did Martha tell you? Me mother. Mrs. Craven fell from the tree. And the fall brought on her baby too soon. Me mother knows midwife, and so she was called in to help the doctor with the birthing. It was a miracle, me mother said, how Miss Craven held on to life long enough to bring her babe into the world. You're still thinking about Master Colin. He says he 
he's gonna have a lump on his back like his father and he'd rather be dead. I doubt he means that. Though he probably wishes he'd never been born. And that's just as bad. Why? Those that feel unwanted scarce ever thrive. I thrived and I didn't feel wanted. My mother didn't like me. Did you like yourself? That's where liking has to begin. I didn't even like myself. I wasn't pretty. And I wanted to be because my mother only liked pretty things. Colin thinks he's ugly, too. That's why his father can't bear to look at him and never comes to see him. Poor lad. There's not been much joy in his life. Has he told him about your secret garden? No, but I'm going to, Dickens. It'll give him something to think about besides feeling sorry for himself. What time do you think it is? Oh, well past three. I've been out all day without stopping for lunch. Someone may be looking for me. Bring your animals tomorrow. If they don't want to play on the malls again like today. Where's Mary? Where is she? I want to see Mary. Where is she? Mary! Master Colin is causing a terrible fuss because you're not been to see him all day. I don't have to see him if I don't want to. Nurse Fox is just back from a holiday and she's got things to see to. She'll be doing her kindness. Where's Mary? Where is she? I waited and waited. Where were you all day? Where's Dickon? If you go to him instead of coming to me, I'll have him banished. Who do you think you are, the Raja of Punjab? If you don't come, I'll have you dragged here. You're mean and selfish. You're the one who's selfish. All you think about is yourself and feeling sorry for yourself. You'd feel sorry for yourself, too, if you had a lump on your back and you were going to die. You say things like that because you want people to feel sorry for you. I was going to tell you something special, but now I'm not. I hate you! Good! Now I don't have any reason to come see you, and I won't! Oh. I'm Master Collins' nurse. And I feel sorry for you. If he had a vixen of a sister like you, he might get well. I don't care if he doesn't get well. If we were in India, I'd put a snake in his bed. Work himself up into a terrible state, and I can't calm him. I'm afraid he's going to do himself harm. Get over it! Go! 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 I only screamed because I felt the lump on my back growing bigger. Can I feel the lump? Certainly not. I want her to. Oh, let her, Mrs. Medlock. Will there be no end to this? Turn over. There's no lump. Yes, there is. You've just got a knobby spine and knobby ribs like I have. So if you ever talk about lumps again, I'm going to laugh. I'm going to die. Is he? Well, the specialist from London said Master Colin would improve if he ate well and got out into the air. You tell her. You've been frail and sickly since you were born, Master Colin. That's all I know. I've always hoped you'd outgrow your ailments. I still hope. I'm worn out. Can you manage without me now? I want you to go. You too. Only Mary can stay. Well, that's up to Miss Mary to decide. Will you stay with me, Mary? Please? Well, since you said please. But if you scream again, I'll smother you with a pillow. And she would, too. Thank God Mr. Archibald is still away. I would be answerable to him for this brouhaha. Thank God, indeed. I'd just as soon be spared another distressing scene. You said you'd had something wonderful to tell me. Will you tell me now? You don't deserve to be told. But I will if you swear not to tell anyone else. 
Nodding doesn't count. All right, I swear. There's a secret garden, and I've been in it. A secret garden? Yes. The door was hidden, and it took me forever to find it. But I did. No one had taken care of it for so long that it became a wild tangle. Everything looked dead. But Dickens said that some of the roses were still alive. And they bloom. There'll be curtains and fountains of roses. The first time I saw it, it was like an evil witch's garden. Ugly and scary. But Dickens and I have worked and worked. And now it's beginning to get beautiful. Everything was gray. But now, it's like a green veil hanging over the garden. A robin made its nest there, in one of the trees. I call him Beggar. There are holy men in India called dervishes, who whirl and whirl until they go mad. That's what Colin was like last night. It's being lonely that makes him act like he does. I was lonely in India, but I didn't have fits like that. That's not true. My IRA governesses didn't do what I want. I'd have terrible fits. No wonder they didn't like me. Reading makes your headache. I'm just looking at the pictures. I told Nurse to bring me a book on flowers, and she brought this one from the library. But I can't tell what the names are. Oh, flower books always use the Latin names. Do you know Latin? No, but I know a poem that was first written in Latin. I do not love thee, Dr. Fell. The reason why I cannot tell. But this alone I know full well. I do not love thee, Dr. Fell. I like that. Do you know any other poems? Oh, well, there are lots of poetry books in your father's library. Will you read some of the poems to me? I'll think about it. You smell nice. <laughs> it's the wind from the moors you smell. Oh, it's springtime and out of doors smell so greatly. I never heard you talk that way before. I'm giving thee a bit Yorkshire. That's a Yorkshire lad. Does not understand Yorkshire talk? <laughs> oh, it's a wonder that is not ashamed of thy face. <laughs> Sometimes Dickon forgets and talks Yorkshire to me. I like it. I'd like to hear him talk Yorkshire. How can you if you don't want anyone to look at you? I don't think I mind if Dickon looked at me. You mean that? Yes. Yes. Well, wonders never cease. Here. Brought my creatures. Speak gently and he'll take to you. The squirrel looks sleepy. so friendly, Dickon. <laughs> you hurt me! Stop being such a crybaby! This is your first time out, so it's to be only for an hour. It'll be for as long as I want. Don't stand there like a stick. Push me. I hope this isn't a mistake. I'm all for it. It's wrong for the boy to be locked away like he wasn't fit to be seen. John's right, nurse. Master Colin can't spend his whole life in a world of his own making. His making or his father's. Oh, it comes to the same thing. Well, one thing is sure. Mary, quite contrary, isn't about to take any guff from Master Colin. 
clear? Safe as churches. I wasn't really yelling at you, Dickon. We talked it over and decided if we were nasty, no one would get suspicious. Uh, I figured that out myself. Go faster, Dickon. No, in case someone happens to see us, we don't want them to know we're going somewhere special. Forever and ever. I'm done turning down the bed, so I'll give you a hand if you like. Oh, I'm not about to say no. You know, I was looking at Miss Mary tonight. She was all plain and scrawny when she first came here, and now she's getting quite pretty. So Yorkshire rain makes the flowers and children bloom. <laughs> now she's changing in other ways too. I mean, she's still haughty sometimes, but not nearly as much. <laughs> Her ass come from being spoiled when she lived in India. No, I think it was the other way round. I think it was hurt and neglect that made her act so bad. You're deep as a river and twice as murky. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Archibald's back. If you can't bring good news, don't bring any. Well, this will cheer you. Mr. Pitcher said he'd be up again soon. Did you find the sleeping powders? Fortunately, or well, there'd be no rest for him tonight. Any idea when you'll be returning? It may be months. We're to travel on the continent. Italy, Spain, Switzerland. He'd rather be anywhere than here. With good reason. Well, the trunks are strapped. Goodbye, Mrs. Medlock. Safe journey, Mr. Pitcher. Thank you.
What's been left undone for years can't be done in weeks. Wish I could help. We're being spied on! Come in here! He knows now. We'll be driven out like from the Garden of Eden. This way. Oh. Look at all the work we've done. Oh, hours you must have put in. Oh. Oh. I was up on the ladder. Uh, uh, poor crippled boy. I'm not a poor crippled boy. Stood up. You're frail, but you are no cripple. And you're not dim-witted. Who said I was dim-witted? Fools, that's who. But why have you locked yourself away? Well, I thought I was going to have a lump on my back. Oh. My father hates me. Your father doesn't hate you, Master Cullen. Then why doesn't he come to see me except when he thinks I'm sleeping? Maybe it's because he wants to spare you his pain and grief. I want you to promise me that you won't tell anyone else about our secret garden. I worked with your mother to make this garden. And I'll work again to make it like it once was. You mean you'll help us? Yeah. Now I'm the only one that can't help. Get the little spade and the rose I potted this morning. What are you doing? Dig a hole. The earth is soft. Hold it firm with one hand. Push the earth around it and tamp it down. Put the apart. You just planted your first rose. There's one. Nurse Boggs tells me you've been going out every day. You mustn't overdo it, Master Colin. I'll do as I please. Your father has entrusted me with your care, Master Colin. I don't trust you, so go away. I'll see you out, Doctor. Why does he dislike me so? I only want him to be well. It's all I've wanted since the day I brought him into the world and breathed life into him. I doubt he truly dislikes you, Dr. Craven. Sick children often vent their anger on those least deserve. You're wrong about Dr. Craven. He wants you to get well. He wouldn't let you be so rude to him if you weren't such a poor, pitiful thing. I'm not a poor, pitiful thing. I stood up for a whole minute yesterday, didn't I? And from now on, I'm going to try and stand up every day. And when I'm good at it, I'm going to try walking. Wow. It's about time. Pick up your feet, Colin. It won't work unless you pick up your feet. I'm trying. Try harder. I'm tired. Take me back to my chair. It comes odd because your muscles are soft from not being used. We have a neighbor, Bob Alworth, whose legs is all spindly once. And now, he's a champion runner. Came from the exercises he done. Could you show me how to do the exercises? Could you, Dickens? Aye, give me a leg. Now push against me. Ow! That hurts, Dickens. <laughs>
going to stay in bed all day, are you, Colin? Colin doesn't care anymore if I come to see him or not. I don't know what to do, Dickon. Colin will find his way. And you'll be the one that helps him find it. The way will come to you. What are you doing? We're just going to go up and down the corridors because it's raining and I don't have anything else to do. He's been doing so well. The boy in the picture looks like you. That's why I thought you were a ghost the first time I saw you. He's dead, of course, but you're alive. I smell roses. This was your mother's room, Colin. She loved the secret garden. So she must have loved roses. Sometimes it's all right to cry, Colin. Let your father cover her picture. I'm the one that had it covered. Didn't want my mother to see the lump on oh, my back. Oh, Colin. She would have loved you even if you did have a lump. But I think she wants you to try and keep on walking, too. But you. Well, the roses bloom, even though it's been raining for days and days. They knew it was June. Where you tend a rose, a thistle cannot grow. Staff said about roses and thistles. He was talking about us. About us? Yes. Ugly thoughts are like thistles. And beautiful thoughts are like roses. As long as my head was filled with ugly thoughts, I didn't have room for a pretty one. It was mean all the time. As long as you thought about a lump growing on your back, you were nasty and rude. Thistles and roses. Experiments with magic. Oh. Mm. 
you know a little bit about magic because where you grew up in India, they have fakirs. And you can charm animals, so you know some magic too. I'm now going to show you my first magic experiment. This is my first experiment. went to bed, I practiced. Praise God. Amen. You're in. So you might as well come in all the way. I, I was just passing and I heard voices. But never did I envision what I've just seen. Must have caught him up and walking. No cause to worry. She's my mother. Susan Sowerby. Since you're Dickens' mother, I guess I don't mind you knowing I can walk now. I don't want anyone else to know. Surely you want your father to know. Well, not yet. I want to surprise him. When he comes home, I shall walk to him and say, I can walk now, father, and I shall grow up and make you proud of me. It has to be that way. That's part of the magic. I never knew it by that name, but what does the name matter? Call it magic, call it a miracle, <laughs> call it a touch of the hand of God. It's the good big thing, Master Colin. And I hope you'll never stop believing in it. No, oh, he won't. He won't. <laughs> I'll be back in a little while to put you to bed, Master Colin. I hope Dr. Craven isn't getting suspicious. When he was here before, he noticed that my legs were getting stronger and that I'm getting fatter. Maybe he'll think I'm bloated. S sick people get bloated, don't they? Dead people get bloated when they're left out in the sun. <laughs> I once saw a dead beggar in India who was so bloated. He looked like a melon about to burst. I don't like talking about dead people or dying. I know, but you used to. You're not rude to Dr. Craven anymore, either. I know. I used to think that he wanted me to die, but now I know he doesn't. Mary, do you like Dickon more than you like me? Well, I, I mean, I, I don't mind if you like Dickon. I just want you to like me. Oh, I like you the same. But different. I have a present for you. Medlock ordered it all the way from London. Oh. I shall wear it always.
Ótimo. Ótimo. It's time for your medicine, Mr. Archibald. Also, this letter just arrived from your solicitor. Shall I see what it is? Another letter is enclosed. Shall I read it? Dear sir, I am Susan Sowerby, who is Martha's mother, who works for you in Misselthwaite Manor. I am making bold to speak to you. Please, sir, I would come home if I were you. I think you would be glad you came, and if you will excuse me, sir, I think your lady would want you to come if she were here. Your obedient servant, Susan Sowerby. What is it? I dreamed of Lilias. <laughs> I've an errand to run. So I'm off to Thwaite Village now. You'll come back, won't you? You have to push me back to the house. Hi, I'll be back. The game's not played out yet. I like that. The game's not played out. I'm glad you're my friend, Dickon. You'll always be my friend, won't you? We'll be parted, you and me. But remembrance will keep us friends. be parted. How can he know that? Dickon knows things no one else knows. <clears throat> Summer's almost over. I know. What will we do all winter, Mary? We'll probably go to school. We're both too old for governesses, and you're well now. Perhaps we can go to the same school. No. Girls go to girls' school, and boys to boys. Suppose there's no help for it. No. Better sit down for a bit. I wish we didn't have to go to different schools. We'll write letters to each other. But it won't be the same. And we won't be able to come to our secret garden. Oh, our garden will be here when we come back. And while we're away, we can think about how beautiful it is and how it's waiting for us. Colleen. Son. Get up. Get up and walk. Come on. You know you can do it. You know you can. Please, Colin. Go. Come on. Go. Go. Well, Father, my mother's garden, and it was Mary who made me walk. Thank you. Come see our garden. You'll be needing this to unlock the garden. Ben, it's been so long. 
I didn't know you. You'd changed so. I grew up. You know about Dickens? Mrs. Medlock wrote to me. She wrote with such love, such compassion. You touched her heart and warmed it. <sighs> Killed in the war. In a forest called the Argonne. If Dickon had to die, he would have chosen a place where there were green and growing things. Aye. <sighs> to die so young. <sighs> Who was to know? Dickon knew. Aye. Dickon knew. I'll unlock the garden for you. I dreamt about the garden. But even in my dreams, it was never this beautiful. You did it, Ben. All these years. They were a promise to be kept. As Mr. Archibald lay dying, he said to me, tend the garden, Ben. Someday the children will come back, and when they do, their garden must be a magic place. It is. Where you tend a rose, a thistle cannot grow. Colin! I'm sure the hospital would release you. Do you think I'd a little, little shrapnel stop me? When I was at Oxford, I asked you to marry me. When I was in France, I wrote to you and asked you to marry me. Why wouldn't you give me an answer, Mary? I wanted you to ask me here in our garden. Will you marry me, Mary Lennox? Of course. 